Hey, my name's Lindsay Grayson, I'm Director of Hand Hygiene Australia and Head of Infectious Disease at the Austin and welcome to our workshop here at the 2016 Infection Control Conference. It's also my pleasure to welcome Didier Pitte here. You can see him sitting down the front and for uh, those of you who don't know, Didier really is the uh, leader worldwide in the alcohol hand rub movement and it's an absolute pleasure to have him here all the way from Geneva, got in at six o'clock last night. So he's suffering what we all suffer when we go to Geneva and that's jet lag, so welcome. <laughs> By way of introduction, uh, I think, you know, in review of the past year, I think uh, the Australian program has sort of gone from strength to strength. Uh, you know, it's now really embedded in the mindset of most Australians that hand hygiene is important. And uh, as some of you know, my daughter actually in her English year nine English comprehension test had to read a brochure an interpreter brochure about how to do alcohol hand rub, rub here in Victoria. So when you've got year nine kids uh, as part of their English comprehension test needing to understand how to do alcohol hand rub, you know you're starting to get uh, some uptake from the population. Uh, nevertheless, I think you know things are never um, stable and there's always this concept that we've done this, we can move on and we don't have to worry about hand hygiene anymore because we've spent five years on it. And I think most of us would agree that that's not the case, that every day in our practice we see that actually it's a bit like drink driving unless you have someone out there policing it and making sure that people still don't drink drive, that uh, people forget and they go back to their old ways and we know what happens with their old ways. And, and I suppose the summary of the old ways is that when I first moved to the Austin in uh, 2000, in 2001 we had 62 MRSA bacteremias and last year we had five and the only thing that we've done differently uh, in, in a major way has been hand hygiene and I think many of you will have seen in your own practices that at least for MRSA and those skin borne organisms that alcohol hand rub seems to make a difference and of course we can't say it's absolutely uh, the hand hygiene program but what else has been changed in a systematic way. Nevertheless with that come some stresses and that's what we plan to address in this first session this morning, and that is uh, the issues of auditor fatigue, maintaining an auditor uh, program, the concept of auditors not just being police men or women, you know, but actually now educators, so that it's not just about all this time being spent watching how many hand hygiene moments are being achieved or not achieved, but uh, actually improving the care as we go along, and I think that's a critical transformation. So the three talks this morning are sort of focused on that theme. The first is about uh, sustaining hand hygiene auditor populations. Second, about training auditors to provide feedback. And the third, which I think you'll find interesting, is a study with Sarah Sparr and one of our infectious disease registrars did where she followed a whole series of medical ward rounds uh, uh, around seeing patients and observed medical behaviour and the things that were good and bad about that. And some of those things may surprise you, but most won't. <laughs> Uh, so it's my pleasure to start with Susan uh, Jane, who's uh, from the uh, Prince of Wales Hospital. Susan has a PhD in infection control and has an interest, I think, in glove use, but also in terms of um, uh, protective uh, clothing, in terms of gram-negative uh, bacterial uh, prevention or transmission. Lots of different interests which are of, of, uh, obviously in, important to us. But she's going to talk to us today about sustaining a hand hygiene order population. Thanks very much, Susan. Thank you. 